What the heck is going on? Retailers seeing sales drop last month, and more companies like Family Dollar warning that they're not expecting to see customer spending pick up for the rest of the year. But get this, the stock market's still going up, the Dow rising again this week, now closing in on 15,000. So who's got it right in the economy? Stocks or consumers? Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth McDonald. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Let's go in focus with Steve Forbes, Rick Unger, Mike Ozanian, Sabrina Schaefer, John Tamney, and Morgan Brennan. So, Mike, who's got it right? EMAC, the consumers have it right. If you go back to 2007, before the last bubble burst, the consumers were on this. In January of 2007, consumer confidence had already started to fall. The stock market took until uh, October of that year to realize what was going on. This time, consumers have it right. Cheap prices, cheap money from the Fed is raising stock prices, but it's actually making consumers poorer. All right, so Steve, here's the data points. I mean, retail sales the lowest in nine months. Uh, we know we had a hideous jobs number last Friday and consumer confidence down. So who's got it right? And by the way, the market hit a four, for the 14th time, it hit a record this year. Who's got it right? Uh, the market has it right. And you can't have a good market in a punk economy. Actually, the market's not good. In real terms, it's less than it was uh, five or six years ago. A uh, company corporate earnings are way up. They have plenty of cash. They haven't paid it out in dividends. So you have a real peculiar situation. Dividends are higher than bond yields of, to, of similar companies. So the market is not uh, hardly a, a bull market, only because of uh, the dollars going down in value. So uh, you can have both, punk economy and a seemingly good market, but in real terms, the market is also punk. You know, you wonder, Sabrina, if the blue sky crowd is too much in control. When you look at, Sabrina, retail companies, I mean, you've got companies like The Gap, uh, you know, Banana Republic, uh, they're all saying, hey, wait a second, we're not seeing the retailers, you know, some in government say, hey, we had a bad winter or, you know, we had an Easter break. I'm not so sure about that. But who's got it right, Sabrina? Who do you think? Well, I, I wish that the, the stock market is forecasting correctly, but I'm concerned that the consumer has it right. I mean, when you look at the anemic economic report that we just got, and you see that businesses are scaling back, workers are dropping out of the labor market altogether because there are no jobs. We just saw this sequestration circus here in Washington um, with no real meaningful cuts. And now the president has, has presented a budget with nearly $600 billion in new tax increases on businesses and on the wealthy. So I just don't see, by, by my calculation, this is not a formula for strong economic growth. You know, Rick, Sabrina brings up the tax bill. It's, it's also $900 billion with all the fees loaded in. But I'll tell you something. Mm -hmm. Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan Chase is saying, you know what? Small businesses are not spending, and we have uh, the confidence uh, uh, for small businesses is not doing so great lately. What do you think is the answer here? Well, look, you know, what's happening here is you've got two different economies going on on two separate tracks. The market's doing well. I, I actually give a little bit more credit to ex expanding sales in foreign territories. We all tend to measure this stuff by the U.S. and Europe, but there are places like Indonesia, like India, where company, American companies are selling a lot of products, and that's being reflected in the market. Here at home, we still have the same problem. We don't have enough jobs. If the middle class is shrinking, they don't have money to spend. We have got to do more for these jobs. Congress has got to stop obstructing the president. We have got to do what it takes to get people jobs. All right. You know, John, I mean, we have been letting the government do what it takes to get middle class no, people the jobs through the housing industrial complex. Yeah. And, you know, I'll tell you something. The best foreclosure mitigation is a job. Uh, and I just think that, you know, when you look at what's been going on with the government policy, John, is that the government is way too much planning the economy. Right? Well, absolutely. And I would point out about market highs. To talk about them is to bring new meaning to soft bigotry of low expectations. I mean, realistically, these were highs experienced 13 years ago when the dollar was much stronger. But when you look at the stock market overall, it's not, no surprise that it would be disconnected from the consumer. Stock markets price in the future. They do not price in the present. And I presume the stock markets are saying down the line, thanks to gridlock, this will be good for the economy and this will eventually be felt by the consumer. You know, Morgan, what about Joe Biden saying recovery summer in 2010? Where'd that go? <laughs> That's a great question. We're still waiting. <laughs> but um, looking at the Dow for a second, you know, those highs that we haven't seen since 2007. In 2007, we did have an economy booming. The housing bubble was still in full throttle. The fact that we're back at those highs right now is very peculiar to me, given the fact, as other people mentioned, we have uh, 12 million people unemployed. We have median salaries still flat. We have retail uh, spending on the, on the downturn again. I think, this is, I think there's a larger issue here that hasn't been touched on yet, and that's the fact that the government is very heavily involved right now. We have three 
$8 trillion, but wait a minute, $8 trillion wait, dollars go ahead. that the Federal Reserve is pouring into the bonds and pouring into mortgage-backed securities. We have government stimulus money. And every time we see uh, the stock markets jump higher, it's usually in response to something the government's saying so as far Rick, as that money's concerned. What Morgan is saying is that there's too much going on from, the, from D.C. What do you say? Well, you know, you could, I, I, I see your point, but you could easily make the argument that government was never allowed to do enough to get this thing back on track. I know this is not comfortable for everybody else sitting here, but you know, it's what do you a, mean, it's a, wait matter, a, minute. Go ahead, it's a Steve. matter of philosophy. I think we should be doing more. This, this, Steve, this, go ahead. This, this is the definition of insanity. You hurt the patient, the patient gets worse, so you got to poison them more. Spending means taking real resources from the economy and delaying politicians fooling around with it. The president, the reason why the market went up this week was because people know the president's crazy tax proposals are not going to pass. The Federal Reserve is cheapening the dollar. We should learn this from the 1970s. Get the government out of the way, and the American people will do the job. Tammy, you want to weigh in? Go ahead. Oh, I do want to weigh in. The notion <laughs> that government hasn't been able to do what it's wanted to do, it's the exact opposite. Recessions are a cleansing mechanism. That's how you remove all the bad things from the economy. The government has blocked it, and that's why we haven't seen a real market rally. People talk about quantitative easing, goosing the stock market, but the better question to ask is how very much higher stocks would be if the mm. Fed were not intervening in the economy mm. and propping up the failed ideas of yesterday, but, specifically know, housing and, and government spending. Go spend. ahead, Morgan. Morgan, go ahead. Yes, and actually, it's interesting when you look at investors, they actually don't believe in this stock market rally either. They call it artificial. Great quote from investor Jim Rogers a couple weeks ago. If you give me a trillion dollars, I'll show you a good time too. And a lot of people are having a good time. <laughs> but yeah, but Morgan, are you also saying that the market now, it's on a parabolic move up. Are you saying the market is also matching what it was earlier last decade, that run up that you're seeing now? Are you seeing the same run up now? You know, I have, I have to look at the charts a little closer to really answer that. Maybe Steve can speak to that a little more strongly. But yeah, Mike, you know, do it. go ahead, Rick. Aren't there's... Now, go ahead, Steve. I want to hear your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Steve will do it. Give it no. to Steve. No, the, 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 John is right. The market in real terms is much lower than it was 14 or 15 years ago, and companies have gotten their act together. And you cannot confuse companies with the economy. Companies are in much better shape than the economy, yeah. especially yeah. big companies. But what, and that's reflected well, in yeah. stock right, but prices. Here, well, Mike, I, I want to turn... Point. Yeah, go ahead, Sabrina, quickly, and I, I want to turn to Mike quickly. Yeah, that's a, that's a point too. That we can't just these are all discrete economic indicators, right? And we also have to consider inflation rate and tax rates and, and the number of people who are leaving the workforce. All of these things that are going to to help us commute. You know how how we're actually doing. Yeah, and to Sabrina's point, Mike. I mean, optimism, optimism, small business optimism isn't doing so well, great. And optimism is a, what's being called a force multiplier in the economy when you think about it. Go right, ahead. and the, one of the big reasons why consumers aren't confident is because we've had a big increase in regulations and a huge increase in taxes under President Obama. This is why companies aren't investing. They've been able to increase productivity, which is one of the reasons why stock prices have gone up. But take-home okay. pay is not increasing as it would normally under a recovery. This is the worst recovery we've had since the Depression, and it's because of too much taxation and too much regulation. Okay, we gotta, but you know, Mike has always wanted Obamacare to I want to on the launch pad. Yet. That's his dream, but uh, we don't know if that's going to happen. But I, I want quick. to just quickly sneak something in here. You know, this is the week we lost Mrs. Thatcher, and conservatives everywhere, understandably, are spending a lot of time talking about how she turned around the British economy. You know how long it took? Two years. Fifteen years. Oh, Excuse two, me. Two. Fifteen two. years. Wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. We got to finish. And yet, and yet, Barack Obama, after a year and a half, was being condemned for not having. So you're done. wait, wait. Not, but to your point, are you saying then Obama Reagan the peace dividend? actually work because it took about 15 no, years. Actually, and actually, if you no, do no, the no. math, you're saying George W's policies No, work. what I'm saying is if we were to use the same logic that the conservatives are applying to Mrs. Thatcher but won't cut the same right. break to Obama, that means that okay, Nixon was responsible for the Reagan All right, we got to <laughs> leave it there. And actually, <laughs> actually, Margaret Thatcher is coming up on the next block because up next, you may not have known it, but America is celebrating equal payday for women this week. But did Margaret Thatcher, one of the most powerful women on the planet, show us why merit pay would put more money in women's pockets? Welcome back, everybody. Lawmakers pushing for an Equal Pay Act for women as America celebrates Equal Pay Day this week. And it is happening as the world says goodbye to a powerful woman who championed merit pay. Margaret Thatcher said the government should not intrude into what employers should be deciding about pay. And Sabrina, you agree. Explain the flip side. Sabrina. 
Yeah, absolutely. Merit pay is the way to go. The, the reality is women's groups on the left that are pushing for equal pay are doing so based on this, the myth of the wage gap, this idea that women only make 77 cents on the dollar that every man makes. But the reality is if you control for any number of factors, regional job market, time spent out of the workplace, college major, the gap shrinks considerably. And so then we need to ask ourselves, is legislation really the answer to close it entirely? So, Rick, is state controlled fairness here for uh, the right way to go for women with pay, given what Sabrina's saying? I, I'm, I'm somewhat amazed by what Sabrina said because she's correct when she points out that women are being paid 77 cents for every dollar a man's getting, but that's but not high. a myth at all. Look, in order, I love the idea of merit pay. Who doesn't? It's the way it should be. But to, to buy into the fact that, that this is what we have is to believe that women somehow don't do as good of a job as men do. And we know that that's ridiculous. So, come on. Let's not deny reality. Women are not being paid as fairly as men. That should not exist in a country like this. Steve, it's what that do you, simple. Steve, what do you think? Uh, I think uh, uh, Sabrina has it absolutely right. When you p uh, take in the variables, that explains a significant part of it. And when women uh, are do pursuing careers the way men do in the corporate world, they rise right up there. But they also have other interests in life, and that's reflected in the, in the pay. And by the way, this bill would simply not enrich women. It wouldn't. It would impoverish us all. The only ones who would get ahead yes. would be trial lawyers, and companies would be more concerned with staying out of their clutches than expanding their businesses, which is how women and all of us move ahead. Morgan, what Sabrina is saying, essentially, that women uh, take more jobs, like social worker jobs. They're not higher paid engineers. And essentially, they don't, women tend not to go in and demand higher pay. You know, I talked to a Wall Street CEO who said, Lizzie, listen to this. You women, you're not used to asking for pay because you're not, and also, you, because you're not used to being rejected. Us as little boys had to approach you on the school <laughs> playground, and we're used to being rejected all the time. What do you make of all that? I think those are all very valid points. I do think they need to be taken into account with any kind of data crunching you do around this topic. But I think, in, in theory, I love the idea of merit pay for women, but we wouldn't be having this discussion at all. There wouldn't still be issues. It wouldn't be up for debate if there wasn't discrimination that happens in some places in the workforce. Mm -hmm. Now, even when you do control for some of those outside factors, Payscale, actually, a data firm, Payscale, recently crunched the numbers and they, they looked at, um, they, took, they took all of those outside variables into play and they still found 1 to 4 percent pay differences between women and men in the same jobs. You're talking still about an issue wait, there wait, that wait, needs to be addressed. Jobs? Well, wait a minute, you're talking about jobs like doctors or, or what? Yeah, so there's, we've seen reports on doctors, we've seen reports in the so-called uh, pink-collar jobs like nursing and teaching. We've seen, um, so we've seen some pay differences in certain tech jobs. I know some of that gap is, is changing for um, some of the jobs right. in tech, but, but it depends on the field. First of all, John, yeah, go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. Just, Rita, sit tight. Yeah. I want to go to John Tamney because, you know, Margaret Thatcher, though, was always so strong uh, about this issue. She said, you know what, I had to fight for myself. And, you know, what we already have in the books, John Tamney, dating back to 63, 64, civil rights laws that do say women should get equal pay, but nobody seems to dust them off to use them. Why do we need another law? Uh, we don't. I think the notion of mandated equal pay for women is very cruel to women because going forward it would call into question any of their achievements as though they, they were made in the, at the ballot box rather than through uh, sheer performance. Also, I think the idea that you can mandate this means that markets will bring new reality to it. Businesses will avoid hiring women precisely because they don't want to be they forced to pay, them to pay people something the markets will not, will, will not bear. Mike, go ahead. No, uh, Thatcher had it right. Uh, uh, if you take away merit pay, you decrease the incentive for people to be productive. The incentive part is so important to a capitalistic economy, which is why Thatcher was able to turn around the a terrible economy in just two short years. Fifteen. Rick, go ahead. Yeah, I, I got to say, you know, I don't, GDP I don't, turned around I don't, in two years. What was GDP? No, you keep on, saying 15. Wait, 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 well, we're saying, say, let's let's saying women pay. I, I want to hear good this. Economy. I want to hear Unemployment this. was up in two years. GDP. And, GDP. and unemployment was up GDP. in two years. All right, Rick, Rick final answer okay, about right. women's let pay. Me, Go I got, I got, I'll come back in a second. Steve, my good friend Steve, I don't want to accuse him of some old school thinking. But, but. He said women have okay. other interests, and that's why they get paid less. No, men have other interests, but when they go they play do. golf, you know, that's business. But when women go and pick the kids up in school, that's other interests. Okay. This is Look. the problem. All right, quick last Look, word, Rick, Steve. First of all, the, wait, the, quick, sorry, Sabrina. Uh, the men. Uh, uh, 
overall, and this is changing, thankfully, we have five daughters, but men do focus entirely on their careers, whether it's on the golf course or anywhere else. And again, when women do the same thing, they rise up because in this open economy, free market, you want the best people possible, regardless. Let's hope the female editors at Forbes get equal pay. That's right. There you Let's go. Just do. kidding, Steve. Just kidding. <laughs> you would get superior pay. Uh -huh. Ooh, so is Sabrina show. and Morgan. <laughs> anyway, forget fights over border security and amnesty. Is a multi trillion dollar price tag why illegal immigration reform should never happen? And that's at the bottom of the hour on cashing in. But first, more commercial flights are arriving on time. So why are air travelers complaints? Soaring. That answer may make your blood pressure go up, up, and away.